I've unfortunately had a bad string of luck on the road. Some of it's my fault. About eight years ago, I was drinking too much. I was a young comic on the road. I was in Seattle. I was hitting on a girl after the show. Every 30 seconds, her friend would lean in and go, not interested. Every 30 seconds, she could do a bit better than you. It would get progressively meaner. At one point, she goes, you're very unattractive. And I was a drunk kid. I just said, get some more Botox, you lizard. I'm deeply ashamed of myself for saying that, and it's completely inappropriate. Although if you were there, you would have been like, he nailed it, totally. But she seemed furious. I couldn't tell by her face, but she seemed very upset. <laughs> Me and my friend were laughing. As we're laughing, phew, I get popped in the face by her boyfriend. I deserved it. She was a lizard, but she was his lizard. And I thought it was cool <laughs> that they stuck together, you know? But this was foreshadowing. A month later, I'm in Cleveland. Horrible time to be in Cleveland. It was when LeBron left the first time. Okay, I, yeah, exactly. I don't know if you guys remember, but they did not take it well. And they made the mistake of having their whole economic plan at the time be um, LeBron, and that's it. So it was rough. And I, I love Cleveland. I've always had good times there. I like the people. It felt like the whole city got dumped because it was Valentine's Day, too. It was just a weird vibe. And I met this hot older woman after the show, and we hit it off. But she's there with a guy friend who's just a friend, but it's Valentine's Day. So there's, so there's that weird energy in the air he's kind of going for. I'm going for, and he's buying me drinks to keep an eye on me, and I'm accepting the drinks because I lack character. So <laughs> he gets up to go to the bathroom, and I asked her, do you want to get out of here? And she said, yeah, let's ditch him. This is how stupid I am. I take her to the bar next door. That's my getaway plan. <laughs> I was like seven feet to the left. We got this. So we're doing shots. We're making out. It's a very romantic night. And <laughs> I'm glad some people laughed at that. If I, I can tell them in a shitty city when that doesn't get laughs at all. When people are like, that's a very romantic night out. That's dry humping and Jaeger shots. That's, that's how we did our 40th anniversary. So I finally say, hey, do you, wanna, do you wanna leave? And she said, I wanna go back to your hotel. And I said, all right then. So we go outside. The dude is standing right there. And I was like, oh no. He goes, so there you guys are. Where the fuck do you think you're going? I said, ah, oh, we're gonna go back to my hotel. And he goes, oh yeah, you're just gonna fuck her and then fly back to New York. And I said, honestly, yes, that was the game plan. I was, I was gonna pitch it quite differently. I was gonna say something romantic, like shall we make love before my expedition or something, you know? I was gonna liven it up a little. He gets close to me, he goes, you wanna fuck her, you gotta fight me first. And that's the first time I noticed he was missing teeth and I was like, oh no. He's been down this road before. And I'm not gonna fight him. So I've never had sex with anyone and been like, that was better than teeth. Never. After every one night stand, I'm like, man, it's cool. I could still eat apples after this. This is great, you know? I run down to the hotel lobby. I grab me a Macintosh. I go about my day. So I said, hey, I'm not going to fight you. And he said, that's what I thought, pussy. Come here, babe. Doesn't say a word to me. Just calls her over. She goes with him. They clearly have a weird arrangement of some sort. They start walking away. As they walk away, there's a guy behind me in a white sweatshirt, Matt matching white sweatpants, very underdressed for Cleveland in February, okay? He's not quite sitting, he's not quite standing, he's almost perched. And as they walk away, he loudly says, I wasn't gonna let anything happen to you. Uh, who are you? He walks over and he goes, I police this part of town. I said, you're a policeman? He's not, this man. It's obviously not with law enforcement of any kind. So I asked, you work for the bar? He said, no. And I said, are you a vigilante of some sort? And he said, yeah. And he's in white. So I said, what's your superhero name? The Snowflake? And he said, I go by the White Knight. And I'm just drunk enough to be like, hell yeah. That's all it took. I'm like, this guy's legit. He's got a name. So we started chatting, I'm kind of baffled. I asked him, you just wait outside and break up fights? And he said, I protect downtown Cleveland. I said, haven't you been hurt? He said, I've been stabbed twice. I was like, dude, why do you do this? He said, cause I fucking love Cleveland, that's why. And it's kind of touching, honestly. He's crazy, but he's loyal. They lost LeBron, they got this guy. It's a horrible trade, don't get me wrong. But this is what loyalty looks like. It's not always pretty, you know? So we started taking a walk. I'm taking a little stroll with the white knight. And we passed a comedy club and my poster's in the door and he said, you're a comedian. I said, yeah. He said, I can never do what you do. And I said, I could never do what you do either. It's, um, it's illegal and strange and quite alarming to be frank. So there's a real mutual admiration going on, you could say. And we start chatting for a while about life and love. 
You know, at one point he asked me, why don't you have a girlfriend on Valentine's Day? And I said, probably my life choices and my career. And he said, me too. <laughs> and I said, we're not so different, you and I, White Knight. <laughs> so he walks me back to the hotel and he said, he's coming to my show tomorrow night. And uh, I said, great, so I'll see you then. And we exchange information as you do with vigilantes. <laughs> and I wake up the next morning, head pounding, thinking, did that even happen? But of course it did. You don't, you don't daydream the White Knight. <laughs> First email I see just says subject heading white knight. And I thought, I think it's him. I don't, I don't know that many white knights. It said, Sam, it was such a pleasure to meet you last night. Unfortunately, something came up and I'm unable to attend your show this evening. Sincerely, your new friend and fan, the white knight, in parentheses, Joshua. That made me very happy. <laughs> Jews are very underrepresented as superheroes. You know, he's, he's our Black Panther. So... I email him back, it bounces back. I email him again, it bounces back to the point that I'm like, this guy's created a fake email account to contact me and then just disappear. <laughs> it's, very, it's very, it's like in Batman when he's talking to Commissioner Gordon and he, and he turns away for a second, turns back and Batman's gone. But you see the wind moving. He did that to me via email. <laughs> it was always in the back of my head. Years go by, I never hear from him, but I always thought about it because I've had weird drunk nights, but this one's particularly strange. So it must've been six years later, I get an email out of the blue. Different email address, but it still says subject heading white knight. And I thought, it's probably him. I don't, I don't have a large white knight Rolodex, so. All it said was, saw you on Conan, funny shit, white knight. And I wrote back, hell yeah, dude, you're still out there white knighting, I'm still doing comedy, we're both still in the game. And he wrote back, oh no, I no longer engage in white knighting. I now have a wife and a little boy and we reside in the suburbs of Cleveland. And I was like, this traitorous motherfucker. <laughs> And then he wrote, how are you? And I said, I'm in fucking Naples. <laughs> and he wrote back, Italy? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out, guys. You've been amazing. I appreciate it very much. All right. Thank you so much.